Hi folks and welcome to this presentation exploring the effectiveness of high intensity interval training also known as HIT, versus moderate intensity continuous training also known as steady state exercise. Before we begin let's clear up a few definitions. HIT is when we alternate between bursts of high intensity effort and low intensity for active recovery. The bursts of high intensity efforts are typically above 80% of VO2 max. With VO2 max being the maximum amount of oxygen our bodies can use. For moderate intensity continuous training, this is when we begin to exercise in around 2-3 to three minutes, we will reach a steady state in our oxygen consumption. And once achieved, we are able to continue to exercise at this intensity for a long period of time. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a summary of the research findings from a meta-analysis by Maturana and colleagues. A meta-analysis is the highest form of evidence-based research with the aim to systematically assess previous research studies to, to derive conclusions about the area of research. In this case, HIT versus steady state. The meta-analysis by Maturana and colleagues was the first to comprehensively combine and analyse the effectiveness of HIT versus steady state on seven key health markers. We are now going to take a look at those results. The first health marker is physical fitness. HIT was associated with higher benefits for increasing VO2 max in comparison to steady state exercise. HIT had a higher effect over steady state exercise for older participants in improving their VO2 max. Older participants were classified as being over 50. Health marker 2, endothelial function. The endothelium is a major player in the control of blood flow through vasodilation and therefore control of oxygen delivery to the muscles throughout the body. In general, higher effects of endothelium function were found with HIT in comparison to steady state exercise. This was partially explained by HIT being more stressful and therefore promoting an increase in nitric oxide release. Nitric oxide is produced naturally in your body and is responsible for the dilation of your blood vessels. Health marker 3, body composition. BMI, body mass and percent body fat were used in the meta-analysis as markers of body composition. According to the meta-analysis, there were no significant differences when it came to body composition between HIT and steady state exercise. So, for creating favourable changes in body composition, i.e. fat loss, HIT and steady state are very similar, so you could use either, or a combination of both. It is important to point out the effectiveness of either type of training on fat loss as an outcome will very much depend on your diet. Moving on to health markers 4, blood pressure. We all know exercise is medicine and this is highlighted within the blood pressure section of the meta-analysis. Their analysis found HIT showed greater effect sizes in, in reducing diastolic blood pressure for participants between 30 and 50 years old. HIT showed greater benefits in people who had a higher blood pressure before engaging in exercise. High blood pressure was considered above 140 for systolic and greater than 90 for diastolic. Otherwise, no evidence for differences between HIT and steady state exercise was found. Health marker 5, blood lipids. When we are talking about blood lipids, we are referring to fat circulating the blood. Low density lipoprotein, LDL, sometimes called bad cholesterol, was explored by the meta-analysis as high levels of LDL cholesterol can raise your risk for cardiovascular disease. 
Overall, there were no differences for LDL between HIT and steady state exercise. Health marker six, inflammation. Again, overall, there were no significant effects between steady state and HIT on inflammation. Although not significant, there were increased effect sizes reported favoring steady state exercise in healthy and young adults as well as when sprint interval training, SIT, as opposed to HIT, was performed. SIT is similar in design to HIT, however, the high intensity portion of exercise is performed in an all out manner and very short in time, typically less than 30 seconds. On to the last health marker, health marker seven, insulin and glucose metabolism. This refers to how well your body regulates and uses the sugars you consume. Overall, not many differences between HIIT and steady state exercise were observed in the improvements in fasting insulin and fasting glucose. However, steady state exercise showed superior improvements in long-term glycemic control, a precursor of type 2 diabetes. To summarise, we have looked at the effectiveness of HIIT versus steady state continuous exercise on physical fitness, endothelial function, body composition, blood pressure, blood lipids, inflammation and insulin and glucose metabolism. Although HIIT seems to be a powerful form of exercise for improving cardiorespiratory fitness and cardiovascular health, steady state exercise is more efficient in improving long-term glucose metabolism. Therefore, if your goal of training is to improve your health, you can combine both HIIT and steady state exercise. This presentation was brought to you by Talking Sports Science. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.